So welcome back to Cozy Rosie Crochet and today you are seeing a very tired Fiona but a very excited one all at the same time. Today I am finally packing up ready to head off to Atlanta for Crochet Fashion Week. I started the process of designing six, well actually seven, seven different looks to showcase on the catwalk of Crochet Fashion Week. I'm going to be taking through everything I'm taking with me over to Atlanta as well as going through some of the highlights of this journey to get to Crochet Fashion Week. You have to excuse my dishevelled look. It is getting dark here. I've got my light ring at the worst possible angle because the bed is completely covered. I can show you behind me in all the actual looks that I'm taking with me. I can't wait to get these out on the runway. On just the weekend just passed, on Saturday I had a photo shoot, which is the first time I've done something kind of that feels real towards Fashion Week, other than maybe asking someone just to try this on for a fit. The photo shoot on Saturday really boosted my confidence in the fact that the designs are, well, apart from stunning, in my humble opinion, they are they're just everything I hoped that they would be. I found the photo shoot really emotional and did get upset. I did have a cry a few tears. The lady that kindly um, modelled for me, she's a friend of my, she's my friend's daughter, which just goes to show how old I am now. And as you can see here, she, she has the most stunning figure, a very beautiful face, but she's not the same size as my models. In some cases, she's smaller. In some parts, she's slightly larger. So like anything i have to preempt that my models may have mismeasured they potentially have um change size and this kind of stuff so even though i have erred on the side of caution when it comes to fit one of the items which is one of the biggest items actually or l projects that i made for fashion week is on the small side because i went with a certain model's sizing and sadly she can't attend fashion week anymore so hopefully the model that's been reassigned to me will fit anywho i'm blabbering on because i literally have hours before i leave now and still so much to do because that's just the way i am i do work well under pressure to a certain extent when i get to this point obviously past exhaustion look terrible do apologize hopefully i will wake up refreshed tomorrow ready for the day ahead so I wanted to tell you how I'm transporting the actual finished projects. Now, these things to me are absolutely priceless. If they don't arrive when I arrive, I'm not taking part in the fashion show. So luckily, um, I'm flying with Virgin direct to Atlanta. So I am able to take on a bag and a carry-on. So I'm allowed a handbag and a carry-on case. Um, I will be honest, the case that I have and that I'm using is not... The most glamorous of cases it was kindly given to me um by a friend um that i've known for a very long time who lives in canada and on, on one of my visits over to see her she had to give me a carry-on because we had so much stuff to bring back i'm terrible for shopping when i'm on holiday this isn't a holiday it should be fine anywho let me show you the suitcase and the looks as they go in obviously it's only a snippet but i'm going to share everything with you in a moment as i mentioned i have six different looks that are going down the catwalk and within those looks some of the looks have two maybe three different pieces in them or patterns in my case i don't know where to start really this is my beautiful case that my friend kindly gave me so let's start with probably my the last thing i made which is one of my proudest makes actually it's just a little pencil skirt i probably should mention that you can find links to all of these patterns over on the website when this video goes live um, there is a whole section on the website that's dedicated to crochet fashion week um, you can find all the patterns and all that kind of stuff all my tools to make that top are going in my actual case so that goes into that pile over there now the other essential that i'm keeping with my actual projects i could grab them all oh. Oh. is scrap yarn so i have a piece a considerably sized piece 
of every yarn that I've used. So this is Lion Brand Kubu. I did purchase this. Um, everything, every single bit of yarn that I've used, Trubu, Paintbox, um, Simply Cotton DK. I've got some of the vest top. I've got some Kubu. Sorry, Kotlin, We Crochet Kotlin. And the reason that I'm taking that is just in case I need to do an emergency repair, just in case I need to literally make a top a bit smaller and literally sew it up. It just takes up a little bit less space, but everything, every little bit of yarn is in here and that can go in there as well. Now I have chosen some accessories to go alongside with, to go along some of the looks. It is spring summer collection, has to be some sunglasses. Oh, I can show you these. This won't go out until they've had these. These are some gifts that I've purchased for my for the models that are going to be going down the catwalk i've just bought them something like a little something local this is locally sourced or locally made soap it comes with a lovely little flannel and a little soap dish because i wanted to give them something local from where i'm from i'm very proud of living in northampton now and just as a little thank you um for helping me you know in fashion week and taking their time to take part as well and the final thing is some business cards. Now, obviously, as you know, I'm going to America. There are lots of restrictions on my visa because I'm not American. I only have a normal standard Esther. Um, I am not selling at this event, to make that very clear. I don't actually sell finished projects anymore, um, mainly because I love making and I want to make myself stuff. Um, it's been quite strange making so many things that I'm not going to wear <laughs> but I'm sure it's going to be I'm going to be able to have the opportunity to make them for myself at a later date I, you know and most certainly I'm going to encourage you to stitch up as many of these as possible and make them accessible for you regardless of what your crochet skill is these may look quite complicated some of them and actually I always try and make my patterns as accessible and easy to follow as possible I've been working with two different tech editors to ensure that these patterns are super easy. Some patterns are already out, previously tested, and we have three more pattern tests in progress that should be finished by the time, by the end of February. So I'm delaying releasing so that everything is checked through. I do have some yarn that I'm taking with me. I mentioned earlier that I've got a plain project. I'm going to be stitching up another cardigan in my size using... Um, Lion Brand Respect. I purchased this. This is purchased using my scarf discount at Hobbycraft. And this is a recycled polyester blend. It's a chain-like yarn. So rather than woven or spun, it's chained. And that's kind of my, one of my favourite types. And it is speckled. I haven't swatched it yet. I'm going to be doing that this evening once I finish packing. A couple of these are going to go in my carry-on. It's a nine-hour flight. So I'm going to need two of those. And then we can get this case closed. This case is done. I can lift it above my head. I'm allowed to put it up, right? So we have a fitting with all of the models um, two days before the show, which is going to give us time to make any adjustments and kind of any changes that we need to. I have a separate tote bag that everything is going into for this. So at that fitting, I'm going to get to be able to kind of pin the models in and then I can secure them in various different ways. And that's what the extras are that I'm taking. So I am ready and raring to go. This goes in here along with my um, bobbins. And yeah, that is me packed. My mind is a little bit blown. I haven't really talked about the whole experience um, and the time taking part in this and crocheting everything up. I wanted to share so much more of behind the scenes and realistically, the majority of the time I've just been crocheting, pattern writing, working as normal, um, I managed to still manage to host the New Year's resolution hop, which was phenomenal. They're just, there's never enough time. There really isn't. But it's been an absolute pleasure just getting to this point, doing the photo shoot and to actually take part in the fashion show itself. I think I'm going to be an emotional wreck. Um, I will be very active on my social media over that period, I hope. There's lots of different designers and I can't wait to meet them all. There's 18 different designers taking part. We're from five different countries, all coming together in Atlanta. Just blows my little mind and I'm so excited to be a part of it. I really am. I'm also getting to meet a couple of my crochet designer friends that I've been chatting to for absolutely years who live in America. And I've not been to America, I don't think, since um, 
since COVID and I haven't had a chance to meet anybody. And in fact, there are designers in the UK I haven't met and I'm meeting the American ones first. I am incredibly excited. I really hope you're going to get to watch, um, that you got to watch along or get to watch along. I don't know when this video is going to be going out, but it's nice just to kind of take a few moments and check in. I haven't had a chance to do this. It's been really full on. Um, but yeah, that's me officially ready to go. You're the first pair of people I've told. I'm all packed. Oh, I could, I'm really emotional. It's so strange. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I'm really, really, really very emotional about all of it. I'm very proud of myself. I can't wait to actually reflect a little bit more on it. I think that's why since the weekend, I've slowed down quite a lot. All the projects were finished. Um, so all I've had to do really is get ready to go. I'm just so excited to share all these looks with you. And I hope that you enjoy this video. I hope that it's me rambling on, but these are all the essential tools that I'm taking. Let's hope I haven't forgot anything. Um, and I tell you what, I will see you at Fashion Week. in the hotel and seemed to have a gigantic room all to my little old self. It's very clean, it smells very clean, like a bit bleachy, wow. So not one, but two queen beds <laughs> for myself. <sighs> this is ridiculous, flight was amazing, delayed by an hour, but Oh, made it. Got my very first Uber all by myself as well. Made it to the hotel. As you see, Adam's booked this hotel for me. Um, well, okay, I'm going to get settled in and then probably go for a little explore, I think. So exciting. I've got a view. I've got a view. Not particularly. You can see out there. So it's kind of, um, this hotel is in like midtown Atlanta. So it's literally... There's a bit of residential, loads of big tall buildings I can see over the way. Um, yeah, can't wait to explore. There's a, I've just seen that there's an art display over at the Millennium something or other. So I'm going to have a check, check at that out as well. I've got a few hours to kill. I've got loads of work I could do. But also it feels like my little bit like I'm on holiday. And I feel like I should take advantage of that. I thought I would just come and update you on how... <laughs> oh how badly I slept last night I know it's to be expected but I am I thought I was tired yesterday let's put it that way I did manage to get some sleep I think probably about four or five hours which I can't complain about the um I'm assuming this is jet lag I woke up at my normal time so that would be jet lag um unfortunately that meant a 2 a.m start on Atlanta time which of course I'm trying to get into and try and forget the whole of the other world exists but I have a stomping headache. I had paracetamol as soon as I woke up, but it's not shifting. I had some water, had some caffeine, just had some breakfast, but I've eaten, tummy's full. I have lots of computering to do. And it's also, I'm trying my hardest to get focused on what I actually need to do. My job today is before I go out, I'm leaving, I think about one o'clock. I can't be late, like it's in my head. I'm gonna be leaving at one. I'm not needed there till two. Um, well, they're starting at two. So for me, that means I have to be there half an hour before and then I need an extra 15 minutes. And then because it's me, I'll need another 15 minutes to make sure I'm there on time. So I'm going to be leaving at about one o'clock. It's an eight minute drive away. Please don't laugh at me. I can't help it. It's just the way I am. I'm always early to the extent, well, just because I have to be early, I can't risk being late. So I'm going to be there super early at the rehearsal venue. Um, hopefully we have to get some photos for you and video of the rehearsal in progress um, so you can almost hope well, so that I can hopefully see the difference between rehearsal to finish show. So excited to see how the show itself is going to work. I've only ever seen a few YouTube videos of other people's fashion shows and seen how they've gone and as I said the photo shoot that I had at the weekend that brought everything to life. I mean, my confidence is shot again this morning because I'm tired. I don't like 
how this jumper is sitting on me. I feel particularly lumpy. Um, hair hasn't worked because my I've got a Dyson Airwrap styler, but I don't use the Airwrap because my hair's too short to curl. But it doesn't work here, which is a problem I used to have with my um, hair straighteners. My GHDs didn't used to work in America. They now work in America, but unfortunately this isn't working. So I've got really dead, lifeless hair today, which I'm not very happy about. I'm going to put some... Anyway, you see what I... Anyway, not feeling great about myself. I haven't even told you about what happens with the, um, the dress debacle. So on Sunday, there is a gala style event. So it's like a bit dress up, bit posh. Now, I'm not a dressy up person. So I thought to myself, do you know what? I've worked really hard. I'm gonna get myself a little treat. Last year's treat was my Dyson Airwrap. This year's treat was gonna be a custom made dress to fit my body. It was the style that I wanted, the the glamorousness that I wanted. Um, I paid for it, ordered it, confirmed that they could deliver it the day before or the day that I was due to fly. The fact that I didn't get the opportunity to I'm not going to get the opportunity to feel like a million dollars just for one day. But what it really did, that experience of going through the high street, trying to find something to fit was really kind of helped me reaffirm why I am designing garments as much as I am. Now, everything on this, I think I talk about this so much, but I'm so passionate about it. All of my crochet garment designs are size inclusive. They are designed with a flattering fit because I want them to be suitable for every body. This collection that is going down the runway, I am super proud of. I would wear pretty much everything apart from one in that whole collection. There is a backless top, which I just can't do, but um, only because of my own hangups, not for any other reason, but I'm really proud of it. Some of the designs are, you can customize all three elements of this um, garment and really get a really nice fit. My focus kind of going forward after this fashion show is gonna to be to make sure that I've made all the basics I need for my body um, and encourage people to have the confidence to make their own crochet garments and how they can adjust the fit of the garments as well. There's gonna be a lot of work around that. So talking unfortunately about tension, gauge, um, and what you can do with that information in more detail. I did a previous video about how to substitute yarn. Um, and a couple of people said, oh, this wasn't really the information I needed. It was useful, but I needed to know what happens if. So there is so many variations and variants that can happen when you swap out a yarn. And I wanna talk about the impacts of different yarns in and the drape and all that kind of stuff going forward so that you can make really wise and informed choices when you're selecting your yarn to make a garment to get the best fit, best look, etc. So I'm going to stop blabbering. I will catch up with you probably after the rehearsal or I'll insert some video here. I am back in the hotel room, just finished the uh, rehearsal, went out for dinner, finally got to meet um, a designer that I've been talking to for 
over three years now. All the wonderful um, creations by Courtney. She's featured in a number of my events. and got to meet her today for the first time. We went out for dinner afterwards and we've just come back. I've just finished eating the most stunning um, chocolate brownie. Today's been phenomenal. I'm absolutely shattered. Have been awake, as you know, since 2am today. Today was so hectic. I want to try and show you and tell you a little bit more about how today went. You can see I'm struggling to keep my eyes open, but it's only 8.30 and I have to stay up a little bit later today. One of the designers kindly picked me up and took me to the venue today so I didn't have to get an Uber out to where the um, rehearsal was being held. So I got to meet Miss Everly Designs and um, they've got a videographer that's kind of tracking a lot of the, the stuff that's going on for them and of course no doubt we'll be in there uh, making a fool of myself here and there and then when we arrived at the venue everyone was kind of just milling around outside and it was just so lovely we've had a lovely little chat group going and it was so nice to put the faces to the handles I can't tell you what anybody's names are because I know them by their online name and I'm so bad with names at the best of times um, got to meet the models, stunning, absolutely beautiful models, got to fit the models, got to actually see them walking and sashaying about in the outfits. And of course, the thing that was the highlight for me was I got to see all the other designers projects. And I can't explain to you the detail that is oh, in some of these designs. They're just absolutely beautiful. Can't remember the, the lady's name. Um, she's worked with some Premier Gala yarn. Premier yarns are actually the sponsors of the Crochet Fashion Week itself. I have separate sponsors in for my yarns as well because I've got Lion Brown who sponsored some yarn and Furls have also sponsored some yarn for me, which I'm very grateful for. And I just, I missed out on getting some yarn support because by that point I'd selected my designs. This yarn is stunning. Um, I, I was chatting to the designer about what she made with it, obviously looking at the project and the yarn was super soft actually, the cotton that they have there. And she used this gold sparkly yarn to accentuate some of the more detailed elements in this dress. Blew me away. There's so many designs that I wanted to just kind of put in my bag and walk away with. Um, the accessories are absolutely exquisite. Things that would not even enter my head these people have designed. It's, you know, really is feels like the creme de la creme when it comes to pushing the boundaries of crochet fashion. Certainly seeing the designs for the gala event, we've got to have a sneak peek at some of those right at the end of the run through, um, which is going to be the Sunday show. So hard to explain how I'm feeling about all of this. It's doesn't feel real. I was speaking to um, the CEO of Fashion Week, Delta Perryman, and even she was saying it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel that it's actually happening. Even though we're all sat in the same room and the buzz and the excitement of everything going on, seeing the designs in these clothes that have been created by these designers is, is truly breathtaking. I'm extremely proud to be taking part in this. I really am. And I'm so excited that you get to come along with me as well. But I am going to have to try and chill out a bit, I think, tonight and get myself sleepy. But it is ne nearly nine o'clock here, so I am going to call it a bedtime for me. I'm going to settle down, read some of my book and hopefully get some sleep. And I will catch up with you in the morning. There's not a lot planned for tomorrow. I'm hoping to meet one of the designers for breakfast. She said that she's an early riser as well. And I've got some more designer friends arriving tomorrow. They're coming to see the show, which I'm so grateful for. Um, as far as I think is Erin from Juniper and Oaks, who I have featured a couple of times on this channel. Um, and also Stephanie from Classy Lady Yarnworks. Some of the words in her patterns. It always makes me chuckle. But yeah, very excited to be meeting them as well. Excuse me. Oh. That's how tired I am. So I am going to sign off for tonight and get some rest and yeah see what tomorrow brings